Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Our young people are no longer children, and they resent being treated as such. Our view is that if we entrust them with responsibility, they will act responsibly. These are not my words, but the words of the, of the late Lord Stonham. They were made during the debate which led to the voting age being reduced from 21 to 18. That was in 1969. The world has changed since then, and so must we. This debate is about enfranchising young people in one of the biggest decisions that will affect their lives. But I actually want us to go further. One of my first acts as an MP was to try and introduce a private member's bill to this House on this issue. That bill would have given 16- and 17-year-olds the vote whilst increasing political education. Now, that bill is now unlikely to be, to be debated and voted on. I sincerely hope that the Government will see sense today and support the amendment in front of us. I have spoken with many people opposite who have, had, in fact, agreed with me on this. The European question is quite simply one of the biggest decisions we can make. Do we want to live in a country that has strong links with our neighbours, where we can engage and lead on issues like roaming charges, health and safety, <laughs> employment rights, food standards and climate change? Or do we want to become more cut off from the world, existing purely to become a smaller and more smaller influence on the world stage? But these arguments are for another day. Whatever the result, one thing can be sure. It will have a long-lasting impact on this country. The in-and-out campaigns have now been launched, and people up and down the country have started talking about it. However, there is one group that are talking about it, but who are being silenced, and it is that group that we are here to talk about today. Now, the Prime Minister is spending close to a billion pounds directly empowering young people aged 16 and 17 year olds through National Citizen Service. Like many members, I took part over the summer as a dragon, judging community projects that young people had designed themselves. National Citizen Service teaches young people about community engagement and encourages them to play a role as an active citizen in their communities. Therefore, can the Prime Minister not see how ridiculous it is to refuse 16 and 17 year olds their say at the ballot box? Now, the case has been made time and time again for why 16 and 17 year olds should be given the vote. But please indulge me. 16 and 17 year olds can consent to medical treatment, consent to sexual relationships, get married, join the army, navy or air force, change their name, receive tax credits, receive welfare benefits, join a trade union, join a cooperative society. They can even do what many young entrepreneurs do, and as London's own Jamal Edwards did aged 16, you can become the director of a company. 16-year-olds who are in work are even required to pay uh, income tax and national insurance. And as my colleague, the Honourable Member for Rotherham, pointed out in a Westminster Hall debate last year, there is something fundamentally wrong with taxation without representation. Indeed, it was the very cause of the American Revolution. Heard. Yesterday, I spoke to a, uh, to a Year 12 political class at Hatcham College in my constituency. I asked them if they had anything they wanted me to contribute to this debate. They were amazing, articulate and inspired young people. Actually, one of the things that they went and asked me about is what my view was on the House of Lords um, being abolished. Um, I have to say, if they'd have asked me that question two months ago, I might have had a very different answer to this one. Indeed, it is because of the fantastic work of the other place that we are here today. I asked the class to tell me their thoughts about votes at 16. A young lad called Malachi told me that he felt unrepresented. He explained that there are 1.5 million 16- and 17-year-olds throughout the UK that have no say. He went on to explain that voter turnout for 18- to 20 24-year-olds was just above 40%. He, 
He told me that we needed the voices of 16 and 17 year olds to be added to this figure to make sure that young people are truly represented. I checked these stats with the Has Commons Library and he was bang on. Indeed, if a Scottish referendum is anything to go by, then we could see 75% of all 16 and 17 year olds vote in the EU referendum. He added that you could count on one hand the number of MPs who had been in full-time education in the last decade. He didn't pass comment on the intellect of any of the members, but he did go on to say that we couldn't understand what it was like from the learner's point of view. Fabian pointed out, you can only influence what happens about your own tuition fees if you're lucky enough to turn 18 at the right time. Lizzie told me that her brother went on a march against Rise's tuition fees, but, that she, but, but was told he shouldn't go because he wasn't at uni. He said that taking direct, direct action was his only option. Charlie told me that there was a need for young people to be represented. OK, I'm going to go and move on to one quick point, and this is how I'm going to sum up. It's in the words of Owen. Owen said four little words to me. It just makes sense. And it does. Yeah, it yeah. just makes sense. Yeah.